My name is uh, Sebastiano Rosito. I'm a customer consultant for eBooks at Elsevier. I am uh, based in the Amsterdam office, which is the headquarters of Elsevier. And uh, yeah, basically, I support uh, eBook customers all around the globe to um, adopt, let's say, the use of eBooks. So today, I had um, a little presentation available for uh, that will focus a little bit from uh, how to use ebooks from different angles so from students to researchers to librarians um, and I will go a bit through the flow if you have any questions at any point please feel free to uh, uh, interrupt or to question I want to be it a bit dynamic uh, I think we have a full hour for this uh, webinar, however, I don't think uh, I, it will be the full hour that is available. But as I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Okay, let's start then. Um, yes, so it starts a bit with uh, understanding the institution needs for books. And well, I've created this chart, which is uh, gives an overview of the uh, workflow of uh, institutions. And these are a number of targets that you that many institutions have that they want to reach. So it is usually about improving ranking, increasing the number of student applications, uh, increase the academic caliber of applicants, increase the international student applications and so on. You see there is a darker part and a lighter part. The darker part you see especially where ebooks can make the biggest contribution. So it is uh, especially in increasing the research output, increasing the research grant funding, which is, becomes also more and more important, improve ac accessibility of resources and increase the quality of education and uh, research resources. So if you look at the faculty needs, you know, these are just a couple of questions and these are based on interviews that we have done uh, with several customers. So what we hear from, from them is what they say is, uh, I need to be able to easily assign and distribute essential course content. I need to stay abreast of the current research in order to be able to provide accurate and information to my students. I need detailed information that I can use to prepare my lecture notes and I need to collaborate with colleagues. So these are all challenges that you know we hear from the faculty but we hear this also from other members for example from students. Um, if you, uh, you see here for example I need the tools and the content to master important research skills. I need to access the material anytime and anywhere when it suits me. I need to be able to conduct and participate in virtual study groups. I'm expected to further learning my learning and needs in conduct research. But if you look also at the researcher side, you see again different challenges. The challenges of research are a little bit different than from the students. Of course, researchers need to really stay up to date, eh? and so they need to have uh, uh, content uh, access to the latest content. Uh, there is also the problem that there is so much content out there, so much information, so you don't want to spend time to go through what is relevant or not. Um, and of course you need access to the content at the right time and of course again also researchers need to collaborate with other researchers. Librarians have the same issues so librarians need to meet the needs of the customers, eh, of the students and of the researchers so they have to make the right selection of content. Of course with all the information out there how do you make the right choices? How do I collaborate with my colleagues? to evaluate the overall standing of the institution and of course the issue of cost saving. Eh? You need to make effective and efficient investments so that you have a maximum uh, impact 
Well, these all issues is where Elsevier actually helps all these groups to make, uh, they address it by different, providing different solutions. This is uh, uh, an overview of the content that Elsevier has. And, uh, well, as you can see, it is in the shape of a pyramid. And basically, you have two divisions, two major divisions. The top part, we have the journals, which are the primary research, of course. You find there the latest advances and the summary of journal articles and topics. And then, lower in the pyramid, you see the different type of books that Elsevier publishes. Of course, below the journals, we have the serials, the book series, which are uh, books, but they are published in a series, so a little, little bit uh, similar to the journals. Uh, then we have the monograph, the e-books. Usually, they are uh, a little bit more research-focused. And then, of course, you have the textbooks. The textbooks are, uh, of course, uh, more ideal for students, for undergraduates, and the major reference works, which provide foundational and uh, comprehensive information. Usually very effective if you want to start a new research or you want to get familiar with a new topic. So this is a little bit like how a student paths student's paths look like uh, using books. So if you enter your studies in the university, you start with the first year. Uh, yeah, usually you start your new studies with textbooks. That is usually a very good introduction to get to know the subject that you're studying. Then to the second year, you usually move more to um, MRW, so that's uh, major reference works, so encyclopedias. That goes a little bit deeper, more, more to, the to the foundation of the subject. And then in the third year, you move to another type of content, which is more the book series, um, but also the monographs. So that already starts to look a little bit more like research. And then, of course, the fourth years, you use the monographs and uh, the MRWs for that's for the fourth year and the grad students and beyond. But not only that, books you can actually are an ideal um, also gateway for interdisciplinary studies. So if you actually want to, um, this is an example of a book that Elsevier publishes, Mathematical Concepts and Methods in, Bio in Modern Biology. Well, of course, the title already indicates that it's about uh, math and about biology. But if you look at the subject areas in that book, you see that there are almost oh, 700 article references to this book. So it is mathematics, but you also see there are 81 references to computer science, but also eight references to social science, 36 to neuroscience. So there are very many links, very many references to other fields. And that is uh, where books distinguish themselves, for example, from journals. They're much more comprehensive, uh, and they have a lot of links to other subject areas. If you also look at uh, reviews for under teachers, you see that books are actually the, the preferred way of teaching in the class. Um, this is uh, all different kind of resources. So we start with print books in libraries, electronic journals, and electronic books in libraries. So these two together, printed books and electronic books, consist of 46% that they rely on books for their learning. So that means also almost half rely on their learning, and the rest is other resources. Uh, so this is a ranking also based on surveys uh, about the benefits of ebooks for education. So here are a little bit the things that are considered to be important. Available on my mobile device, you see that it is 
considered very important. Eh? So access to the information where you have it at any time, that's very important. No digital rights, eh? so actually download as much as you want, not that you are restricted in your downloads, that's also considered very important. Integrated with other sources such as journals and ScienceDirect, uh, the research platform that Elsevier has, books and journals are hosted on the same platform, so you can also use journals and books together. That is the main advantage of using ScienceDirect. So once you're reading a book chapter and you see a link to a journal article, you can quickly go actually to the journal content to get a little bit more deeper knowledge. And once you are at the journal content and you read a new bit of information, you can link, for example, back to a book again. So all this content, books and journals, are interconnected and they work together. Also what's important, available for my students for free, yeah, that's what universities find important. Available when the library is closed, yeah, so also 24 hours a day access, easy to find and easy to search. Well, these, all, these are all issues that ScienceDirect addresses. So, this is a little bit similar to the uh, other graph I showed earlier, so the type of experience and uh, by which it is supported. So again, you see a path of studies from year one to year four and grad students and beyond. So in the first two years, you rely mostly on foundational courses uh, to get an, an idea of the, um, of, the, of the subject, introduction to a broad range of subjects and fields, limited depth of content, and there's less page of, uh, of, uh, for original work. And of course, books and course packs really support you in that, also reference materials. When you move towards the end of the second year and the third year, also in the fourth year, you do a little bit more advanced things, so you do more group projects, uh, you have more specialized path in your study, and you start to specialize yourself, and there's more engagement in the specific field of the study. And again, books and course pack, but also in the increasing use of journal articles will be more important in that stage. And of course, if you arrive beyond your studies, uh, if you become a grad student, uh, you will start to conduct independent projects, personalized parts of studies, but still again you see that books and reference materials remain important uh, in your studies. So the value of eBooks and Science Direct, well this is a picture of, uh, well, how it was until not so long ago, eh? so you have uh, a lot uh, of books in your library, in print, but what you see more and more now is that uh, students and also researchers switch to an online platform eh? like Science Direct and they have all the information there. Well, what that leads to, you have, if you don't need all those books anymore, you can use that space actually to, uh, to organize differently. You can uh, make reading uh, tables or computer stations where you can actually access the material. You can um, divide the space differently so that students can work together. That is actually, I think, more and more what I also see during my visits to, to to universities and I see everywhere there is a change going on in the library from a more traditional way with lots of books, printed books, to a more digital environment and a more project-based working atmosphere. <coughs> so ebooks enable education and accelerate learning. The integrated book and journal content on ScienceDirect uh, enhance the experience of, of learning and of teaching. You can use the two types of resources interchangeably. And also, of course, the search functions that are available on ScienceDirect uh, 
allows you to find the content that you're looking for very quickly. We also, Elsevier also works together with um, other tools, with other provider of, for example, discovery services to make the content that we have more discoverable eh, so that you don't only have to go to Science Direct, but you can also find them, for example, through search engines, as we work together with Google Web, Bing, uh, Yandex, and other search engines to make our content more discoverable. Also, it is uh, more discoverable through our databases, eh, so we have Scopus, which is an, artic an, an abstract and uh, reference database, but also Web of Science, uh, PubGet, and uh, other uh, abstract and indexing databases. Also, of course, the um, uh, library discovery services, such as Primo and Suman, is also supported by Elsevier. And these have led to great um, increase the great increase in discoverability. We saw that in uh, our usage figures, so we see definitely increase in all the cases uh, of uh, usage. This, the platform of Science Direct is designed in such a way that um, access to content is simple and accessible and what is also, I think, a main advantage is that the, con that the platform is constantly improving. We're constantly thinking of the ideas of how to improve the experience of the platform to make um, learning and teaching actually um, seamlessly work together. Also, we start to implement smart tools such as uh, multiple chapter downloads or a vertical, vertical uh, uh, virtual microscope. These are all smart and uh, collaborative things that you can use to increase your uh, effectiveness. And of course it's comprehensive and current. Uh, you have access to the latest um, content available on our platform. This is a few features that we have added in recent years. So one of these is a multiple chapter download, which means that you can, if you see a book that you find useful for your studies, you can, uh, with one click of the button, you can download the whole book. It used to be chapter by chapter, but that is actually a great improvement and we saw that uh, users are making great use of this. So you can download the whole book, store it in your, in your tablet or in your laptop, and you can read it when you are at home or when you're not connected to the internet. Also, other features that we have implemented on the right-hand side, you see here uh, a feature which is we call the virtual microscope, uh, which basically um, is a feature that um, <coughs> researchers when they publish a chapter, they send us the high definition figures um, of their article. And what it allows us to do is that you can zoom in, this is for example um, an, an, a cell, you can zoom in to the very details of that, uh, of that picture, which of course the, the author can refer to in his article. Also, there's a collaboration with Mendeley on the Science Direct platform, which is a reference manager in which you can export your PDFs from journal content as well as book content. And we see also that faculties now more and more prefer actually to have access to electronic resources. Um, Uh, so if <clears throat> this was the outcome of the um, uh, of the survey, if e if textbooks were available via the library, only seven percent would still say that they would assign the printed content. Eighty percent would assign the online 
core text and recommendation reading online. It's also handier for the teacher as well as for the student. They can find the information more quickly and easily through electronic resources. So how does Elsevier support this mandate? Uh, we have an, 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 an editorial strategy which is a little bit different from other publishers. We actually commission books rather than um, uh, uh, accept proposals. Uh, so Elsevier actually rejects many proposals from authors because we just don't think that either the quality is not good enough or there's just no demand of the book that can also be. So we really want to publish books and also textbooks in those areas where we think it has the biggest impact. We also monitor the usage of all the content that we publish, of the textbooks and the other books and the other content resources, and this also gives us an indication how successful um, our publications are. So as I said, we have a selective uh, process, uh, so we really commission the best authors to write for us and to uh, publish with us their books. Uh, annually we review the books for content relevancy, so you don't need to buy books that are needlessly updated. That was also uh, will save you money in this way. And <clears throat> we look for pedagogical, uh, pedagogical uh, elements, which of course enhances the learning. <coughs> we also, uh, of course, publish in mobile format. We also see that that's very important in uh, with, with students and researchers that they want to access the information uh, wherever they are. Uh, so, um, we, want, we, we hear that they want to have access to their books on, on their iPhones or on tablets to basically read whenever they are and not only when you're in the library or when you are online. And of course our platform is optimally designed to, um, to research in this way, uh, the, the, the mobile platform allows you to easily read the content of our books and of our journals. Major reference works uh, are uh, an ideal tool for um, education. They provide, they provide very foundational content in uh, specific subject areas. Here are a few examples. We have here the International Encyclopedia of Social and Behavioral Sciences. It is our, actually our best-selling book at Elsevier. It is an enormous book. Uh, it has over 20 volumes. <clears throat> and um, it is also highly regarded uh, by researchers and by librarians and by students as a source of information. From the um, uh, major reference works, Elsevier has recently now developed actually a new type of uh, content which is called reference modules. Reference modules are um, a new way of publishing books, so we don't publish anymore in, uh, in the format of a fixed book, but we now want to move to a new solution which is we call reference modules, and basically the reference module is a module that contains several encyclopedias and major reference works in a certain subject area. So here are a couple of examples that we have published in recent years. We have a reference modules in food science, uh, biomedical science, earth system and environmental sciences, chemistry. And the advantage is that this content in these modules are constantly updated. So you will never have to update 
your collection anymore. Once you enter into the module, you know you will have access to the latest content uh, in that field for the foundational content. We have more uh, modules launched this year and we will keep expanding the program because we receive very positive feedback from uh, researchers but also from students and from librarians that this tool really helps them to um, address all those issues from keeping up to date, being discoverable and of course also it is hosted on Science Direct. Again you have that good integration with the journal, uh, journal content. And this is just an example that, um, of how you can also use uh, reference modules. Uh, we have done, this is one of the um, editors of one of those reference modules, Professor Colin Paul of Wayne State University in the USA. And he made a little bit experiment with uh, one of the modules in which he actually started to assign uh, course material from the reference modules in his class. So he teaches the course principles of in, instrumental analysis and <clears throat> he found that the textbooks that he used in previous years were expensive and that the material in those textbooks were also out of date so he piloted um, the reference module um, he piloted, he did a little experiment with uh, uh, chemistry reference modules and he assigned uh, content to read for students by directing them to the module. So the outcome is that um, it was a very successful experiment. He, um, the students were very, they could very easily find the the content he referred to and um, also it saved the students a lot of money by not buying the printed course material. So here are some textbooks that um, Elsevier publishes that are in the top by downloads. We see here for example in biomedical research uh, you see some top titles, Essential Concepts in Molecular Pathology, uh, Human Reproductive Biology, Basics, Basic and Applied Bone Biology, and these are all written by um, experts in their field. So the content is also of high quality. And we have the same in textbooks also for um, Fundamental Life Sciences. So these are also the top titles we see in the usage, Animal Behavior, Principles of Molecular Biology, Human Parasitology, and these are all books, again, that in this field are written by the experts in the field. In energy is a hot topic in recent years, uh, with all the change in, 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 in global warming and eh, with the, the, the issues we do have with global warming you see there is a lot of publications in this field and these are one of the top titles that we have also in this field solar energy engineering uh, geothermal power plants these are now new solutions that um, um, people that are in research want to study about. And this is the selection for Earth and Environmental Sciences. And we have the same also for Material Science and Material Engineering. Again, the top titles we have um, on our platform on ScienceDirect for students and researchers to use in their studies. And food science, which is also an upcoming research area we have identified in Elsevier. More and more we see that um, there's more focus 
on uh, food science, uh, the health of how healthy our food is, and there's a lot of research going on in that field. And um, yeah, this is actually what I had prepared for today, uh, for the webinar. If you have any questions, um, yeah, now is the time to ask. So if there are any questions, please let me know of any requests. Please let me know. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, if you want to connect with us, uh, you can use the questions uh, module. So if you want to ask any questions, just please shoot it on the questions module and we're going to answer it right now. So, Stanley, maybe if he, if uh, if I can ask if you can give us a, a quick uh, uh, live demo for mm -hmm. the books on yeah. Science Direct, so yeah. that would be very beneficial. Yes, uh, we can do a little live demo on Science Direct. So, I hope that um, many of you are familiar with the platform Science Direct? When you use it in your research or in your teaching? So you go to Science Direct by www.sciencedirect.com Yes, and then you land on the homepage, which has recently been updated, and um, it allows you to immediately do a quick search here by entering a keyword. Or if you know the author name of the book or of the journal article, of the, of the journal author, you can enter that here. Or of course, if you know the title of the book of the journal, you can also enter that here. If you don't know that, or if you want to just browse to the content, you can also select here either journals or books. Well, in this case, I will go to books. And you can see here all the books that uh, we have available. What is, when you do your search in books, it is um, always handy, I think, to look at, to make already a selection. So there are a few filters that you can use here. So you can look for all publications, all journals, all books, and then the books you can make a selection again for reference works, handbooks, book series, or monographs, books. And you can select the access type. So you can indicate here if you want to um, uh, access all access types or you want to have full text access. <clears throat> it depends a little bit what you uh, want to do um, because of course as your university uh, as university it's, it is impossible to subscribe to all the content that is available on, on Science Direct. Uh, there are, uh, you have to make a selection of course to what content you want to buy from a platform and sometimes we see that, that customers uh, think they have access to something but they cannot and that's because uh, yeah that's because of the filters so if you choose the full text access filter you will access content that your institution subscribes to if you select all access you <coughs> all access types you access all the content that is available on science direct however it can be of course that if you're university is not subscribing, you cannot uh, access that book. 
You can also here filter on the left hand side by uh, subject. Uh, so you have here four main categories. Uh, you have social science and humanities, health sciences, life sciences, physical science and engineering. <clears throat> well, you can also make a sub-selection again here. So on the physical science you have chemical engineering, chemistry, computer science, earth and planetary science, energy and so on. With life science you have uh, of course agriculture and biological sciences, biochemistry and genetics <coughs> and molecular science, environmental science, immunology and microbiology, neuroscience, And here are the health science subject areas, nursing and health professions, pharmacology, and last, of course, the social sciences. And of course, in the sub-selections, you have again a sub-selection. So you can really, if you look for something specific, filter it down. <clears throat> but of course, you can also um, do a search. Uh, you can make here um, um, a search, for example, on, um, you can do a simple search here, but you can also go here to the advanced search. And the advanced search allows you, for example, to specify more your search. <clears throat> This is in all content. Again, you can select for journals, books, reference works, or images. So in this case, I will just go to books. And here you can fill in the search term. If I, for example, want to look for Mars and uh, water, right? so I want to know if there is water on Mars. I can select here to search in all fields. Uh, or in the authors, source title, in the chapter title, abstract, but usually of course the all fields uh, will <coughs> generate the most results. And the same counts of course for the second field. Uh, I've selected of course books, you can look also in subscribe books or in your favorite books. If you subscribe to the platform if you create a profile, you can also store your favorite books and you can select a subject area here that you find relevant. And you can choose also a date range right, from all years till a specific year range. Right, so you can really select from 2008 uh, till uh, 2010. But in this case, I will keep it to um, all years. And you click on search. And here you see, of course, the different book chapters that are related to Mars and water. Well, here I have here Encyclopedia of Volcanoes, second edition, Volcanism on Mars. You click on it. And here you have the book chapter with all on the right hand side, you see in, uh, the contents of the book. So you can quickly see that we're now in chapter 41. But of course, if you say like, hey, I want to also know how it is on Venus, you go to the next chapter. And you can read about Falconism on Venus. <clears throat> Here you have your abstract. Of course, you can quickly scan if this chapter is relevant for you. Uh, you can also look here at the keywords. And of course, under the chapter title, you have here the authors uh, of this book. On the right hand side here you see recommended articles. So you see here 
articles that are recommended to read for further reading uh, by this book chapter. So again, you see here um, back the reference to volcanism on Mars, and also you see here volcanism on Io. You also have here related book content. Well, in this case, there's no related content selected. So this allows you to really navigate um, through the whole uh, book. It also has here different export features, so you can here download the PDF, eh? so if you want to take it with you, read it on your, uh, uh, on your tablet or on your mobile phone, you can download the PDF, but you can also export and, for example, save to Mendeley, your reference manager, or to RefWorks, but you can also export to, for example, RIS, to export it to EndNote, or to have a simple text export with the um, uh, bibli bibliographical data in which you can choose for citation only or you can do citation and the abstract. And of course the last section allows here to export the full text in two different formats so besides the download in PDF we have also the EPUB format uh, which is um, uh, for e-readers, and we also have Moby Pocket, which is specifically for the Kindle reader. <clears throat> so in that way, you can read it on your um, Kindle reader. Um, as I said also earlier, you can register yourself and make a profile, so that if you have a profile already, you can sign in here. So in this case, these are my credentials. I can use my username and password and sign in. If you don't have that, you can register here and you have to create an account. You have to fill in your first name and family name, your email and create a password. You click on create and then of course you receive an email in which you have to uh, confirm that uh, that you are the person that just created the profile and then you can sign in on Science Direct. If you do that, I can show you. Yes. So now I entered my profile and you see here your name appearing and you can do different things. Uh, you for example uh, can <coughs> um, here manage, for example, alerts. So you can, if you have entered a specific uh, search term, you can um, add here a topic alert and then every, so at this time I, for example, set here an alert on the search term flood I did it on a frequency on a monthly basis and here I uh, said I want to receive it by email. You can also, this was a topic alert, you can also, oh, no this was a search alert, you can also do a topic alert. So you can select here um, <clears throat> your category, 
if I do, for example, energy. And here I can select the domain. I do energy, frequency on a weekly basis, latest results, and archive. I will save the settings. And now I have here an uh, alert, a topic alert on energy on a weekly basis. You can also, of course, if you don't need it anymore, delete it. So just click here on delete. It asks you if you are certain you want to delete it. And then it's out of your profile. You can also download an electronic holding report. In this case, you can see uh, which content. It is basically an export of the holdings of your university. Um, and of course, you can change the details and settings here. You can update your profile, change your password. <coughs> if I go back here to books, there's one more feature I would like to show. I showed here the advanced search, but of course there's also another field here and here you can use the expert search and this is um, in a way that allows you to search for very specific um, searches. You can, I can do the same search as I did before, so I can do here uh, Mars, and then I can use um, the Boolean operators and um, water, and I for, can, for example, do um, or let me do that differently. I can do, do Mars and Venus and water. So you can do more search terms. Of course, you can select again if you want it in books. And you can do this as long as you want. You can do many, many keywords. It doesn't have to be only and. You can also use, for example, the operator or, which of course gives you a different outcome. And here you have the results of all your search terms. On the left hand side you can refine it so if you want to say like, okay, I don't need the older content but I want more of recent years. So I do to 15 to 16 to 17 and I want it to be only book content and I want some reference works um, and here if you want to have a specific publication title but maybe that's not so relevant now but you can see here you had 1146 results but if I apply the filters you can narrow your search term down and now I have 90 results left. So you can better browse in this way to the content that you need. You can here sort them. Eh? You can sort them on relevance or on date. By standard it's now on date. And because I'm logged in now, for this search result that I did just now, I can also save this as an alert. So when a new article or a new book chapter will be published uh, with it that fits this search term, I will receive an email telling me that there is a new 
uh, article or book chapter available. So I can save search alert. I can give it a name. I can say, for example, uh, Mars. And I can choose here the frequency again, so I want it monthly. And I save it. So now you have your alert was saved as Mars to update alerts. You can also again here go back to manage my alert page and there you can um, delete it or adjust the search. Um, yes, I think that was more or less it. Uh, are there any questions about this part? Any requests for searches? Okay, so uh, I just have uh, regards from Haysam Zaki that uh, saying thank you for the presentation and the question of uh, our they are free database. No, it's not free database. That's all the questions that we have. Mm, uh, right okay, now. no, no, it is, uh, it is on subscription indeed. It is. Um, mm. Any more questions from anyone? <clears throat> okay, so I think, uh, I think that's, that's it. it huh? since yeah, I think that's it since there is no uh, any questions. Thank you very much for attending this webinar and uh, uh, waiting for you for other webinars. Please uh, keep uh, stay tuned with our webinars. Next webinar is coming on our Facebook page, Elsevier Africa, facebook.com uh, slash Elsevier Africa. Thank you very much, Sebastiano. Thank you very much for your time. I've been very Thank you. Uh, useful in this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, yeah having me and um, yeah I hope uh, you all learned something and enjoyed it. Okay, thank you. See you in the okay. next webinar. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.